Hi, welcome back to 0x4141414141. Today I'm gonna start solving the challenges from a rap emporium.com, which is a site meant to teach uh, return oriented programming in isolation, so with minimal reverse engineering and banga hunting needed. The challenges are um, available both for 32 and 64 bit architectures. We're gonna solve them both. So we're gonna start from the first challenge, which is the red to win. So let me just download and open it. We're gonna start playing with the 32-bit version. As you can see in the challenge description, uh, there is a method within the binary that we wanna call. So it will probably print our flag, which as you can see is stored in a txt file. As a first thing, uh, we can just run the binary to see how it behaves. It simply receives our input and then exits. Before, it tells us that it will attempt to fit 50 bytes of our input into a 32 bytes buffer in the stack. So possibly a buffer overflow will take place. And since there are no stack cookies, if our buffer overflow is big enough to overwrite the saved return pointer, we can hijack the program control flow to what we want. Let's double check using objdump. We go to the main function. Um, as you can see by inspecting the call instructions, the only relevant to our goals is uh, call pawn me. So, Let's just uh, go straight to pawn me function. This one calls memset to zero out the 32 bytes buffer, then perform some output, and finally it calls fgets to read our input, and we know that it will read the more characters than buffer can receive. So now we just have to find the method that will print our flag. Since the binary is very small, I'm just scrolling down to find it. Here it is, red to win. As you can see, it calls system. Probably it uses cat to print the flag.txt file. The first approach that I'm gonna go for is a quite a rough one, which is just filling our input with the address that we want to return to, repeat it as many times as we can insert into our input. So I'm using Python. We pack the 32-bit address, which is uh, 4 bytes, so we multiply it by 12, 48, it fits in the 50 bytes of our input, and it works we got our flag. If we want a more precise uh, overflow, we can um, generate a debruging pattern. We copy it and we use it to cause a crash. We can then uh, check where the sag fault uh, took place. And then we look up uh, this value with, um, within our debruging pattern to calculate the offset that we need to overwrite in a precise way the save return pointer. In this case, we have 44 bytes of padding. So we can just print 44 A's, for example, and then our return pointer. And it still works. Let's move to the 64-bit version. Let's first run it. It is exactly the same as the 32-bit version. So what we need is just to extract the correct address that we want to return to, which is uh, this one. And now we just have to uh, modify our previous payload to work on 64-bit. So since the address are 8 bytes, we multiply by 6, which cha we change the return address and we change the packing function and it works again. Since this was uh, pretty easy, why not try to make another step and uh, get a shell instead uh, of just getting our flag? To do that, we want to know the precise offset. 
I'm gonna examine the core file using GDB. I'm using uh, the Jeff extension, so I just use the context command to get an overview of uh, what is the situation when the crash happens. And if you look at the register, you may notice that um, our input, which was the debugging pattern, is pointed by RSI, RDI, and RSP. Actually, for example, RSI points to the beginning of uh, our string, while RDI points to the second character of our string, and uh, RSP points in other zones of our input. So what can we do with this control over registers that we have? If we have a look at the red to win function, we can see again that it uses the system to perform its action and it receives the parameter for system into EDI. So EDI points to the string containing the command, but EDI is under our control. So if we hijack the execution to this instruction is a red to win, which by the way isn't affected by ASLR. And we put inside the, the string pointed by the I, which is our input, beginning from the second character, any command, we can execute it. So we can simply use this trick to get a shell. We don't need the complex wrap chain. So let's craft a new payload for our binary. We begin with a leading uh, white space to align our command to the string pointed by, our, uh, by EDI. We make sure that it is uh, 40 bytes long. So the next uh, part of the payload, which is the return pointer, will overwrite the saved return pointer in the stack. And uh, what the fuck, why doesn't it work? Actually, what's going on is that the uh, file descriptors get closed, so you can't interact with uh, your process. And you can use this uh, little trick to avoid that. The cat command will simply keep our file descriptors open. And now our exploit works, we have a command execution. So now I'm gonna write an exploit using pawn tools to have a template for our next challenges. We open a local process, launching uh, our binary. We send our payload after receiving the prompt. And now we create our payload, which is the same as before, of course. We make the exploit executable. Oh, I was forgetting that we want to interact with our shell. And it works.